Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. It is early in the morning, so I do have my tea with me. This is not coffee. This is the Twinings Chai French Vanilla. I love this tea. It is so good. I'm not much of a chai fan, but when I found that one in the French Vanilla flavor, it was so good. And um, it works for when I have a cold, when I'm sick, or whatever the case, because of the cinnamon. So, <sighs> let me take out my stirrer. I should take out my tea bag, but I'm going to just leave it in there. You know, but um, so yeah, today we are going to be doing my October reads and studies, which also includes my September wrap up. And um, yeah, we're just gonna dive right in because I have a few things, quite a few things. Um, I pretty much had a really great reading month for the month of um, September, it was really, really great. I think there was maybe two books that didn't fully impress me. Um, but other than that, all the other books I read were, I believe, five star reads, if I am not, yep. I believe all the other books I read this month were five star except for two. One was a three star and one was a four. So yeah, pretty, pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do something that I noticed that my sister does. She shares with you guys the type of devotionals that she does throughout the month. And um, I normally already know what devotionals I'm going to do because I pre-plan those out prior to the month and write them in my planner. So the planner I have right now is a Recollections Faith Planner. You guys have seen me do videos on this planner so many times. Um, click the on the screen to see that. But um, this is the old one. You will not be able to find this cover, at least not from Michaels. If you check eBay or Amazon, you might. But um, yeah, this is an undated planner, which I love. Let me just go to a blank month. It is undated. So it does last a long time, even the weeks are undated, but um, they're set up specifically for scripture writing. If you want to know more about this, just click the on the screen to go watch that video. I think I did a review on this um, and walk you guys through it. I am going to do a flip through of this planner because I feel like I should. <laughs> um, and then I have the updated one, which I need to show you guys. But anyway, moving to September, here is what my month looks like. For September, I have not done my month for October yet. <laughs> but, um, so for September, I did a total of four reading plans. And I also did a sort of photo challenge as well. It was biblical based. It was the Biblical Fiction Buffs um, reading challenge, photo challenge that we did for the book club. If you don't know what the Biblical Fiction Buffs is, click the on the screen to see my announcement video on that. But I joined the book club and I am loving the book club so far. But um, okay, so the first week of September, I did Less Than Perfect Bro Broken Men and Women of the Bible. It's by Anne Spangler. And I did that because I actually own the book title less than perfect broken men and women of the bible but i haven't gotten a chance to get to it so i figured since they have the devotional for the um for the book i might as well just try it out and see if i enjoy it and i did like it um i gave it four stars only because i felt like some of the people they included were pretty like simple adam eve um ruth rahab was it ruth no i don't think ruth rahab and um it wasn't a lot in of in-depth information but it was still good um which kind of sparked me into wanting to read the book quick quicker so we have that so that was the first one that i did um and then the next one i did was cross and crown and that was from in touch ministries and i'm just looking on the um holy bible app this is from in touch ministries it was a seven day easter devotional um, and if you guys don't know, In Touch Ministries is owned and created by Dr. Charles F. Stanley. Um, and that one was really good. I gave it four stars as well. I, I, I got some good stuff. I gave, I only gave it four stars just because some of the stuff I already knew. Um, and I felt like I was just repeating knowledge that I already had. Um, but I did get some new revelations from that. So that was really good. Um, moving on, we then did Fierce Hearted. Um, it's Fierce Hearted, Live Fully and Love Bravely by Holly Girth. And again, that is, um... Another book that I own that they have a devotional for that I figured I would do. And for that one, I gave it three stars. Um, it wasn't all that good, so I'm not sure if I'm going to read the book. <laughs> um, the book is probably going to be given away just because I wasn't intrigued by the devotional. So I feel like I don't need to have a physical copy of the book. I can always just give it out. And the last one I did, which I... <sighs> I loved it so much that I actually have a devotional style video coming to you guys soon. Um... I want to start doing devotionals on the channel so 
and not devotional with me like, like where you guys are doing a devotional with me but like an actual sit down conversation devotional with you guys so i did one based off of one of the entries from this one and it's called begin again by leanna tankersley i own the book for that and the devotional was so great i gave it four stars um and I'm really excited to dive into that book really soon because I really, really just enjoyed it so much. So those were the devotionals that I read. I'm not sure what I'm going to be reading for October yet. So you'll know next month. But uh, moving on, the Bible study that I said I was going to do is Unexplainable Jesus by Erica Wiggenhorn. This is a study of Luke and I'm doing it online with her in a Facebook group. Link will be down below. I've slacked off on this. I'm a week behind now. Am I a week behind or am I two weeks behind? Oh, Jesus. I don't even know. I'm about a week or two weeks behind, which is terrible. And um, I need to catch up, like, really, really badly. I need to catch up. But I am... I, I've done this much so far, if you guys can see. I've done this much so far, and I'm actually really, really enjoying it. It's really good. It's really in-depth. Um, a, a mix of you reading, a mix of you thinking, a mix of you um, doing some internal digging. So I really am enjoying the study and I definitely recommend it um, to you guys. So again, it's Unexplainable Jesus. This is a part of her Unexplainable series because she has Unexplainable Life, Unexplainable Church, and then she has Unexplainable Jesus. And Unexplainable Life and Unexplainable Church are both on um, the book of Acts. It's broken up in two parts. And then this one is on the book of Luke or the gospel of Luke. So we have that. Moving on to my books. Oh, you guys, when I say such a great reading month, such a great reading month. Um, So this first book, okay, all of these books were sent to me for review. I just want to state that these were all sent to me for review. I did not have a say in like, you know, if I was reading them or not, I had to read. Um, But before I dive into that, I do want to share with you guys this one. Um, It's A Light on Hill by Connie Lake Cassette. I am currently rereading this. I only read five chapters in September though. I wanted to read like 20 chapters in September, but I only got a chance to read five chapters. And I am reading this with the Biblical Fiction Buffs Book Club. This is a book pick for the fall. And I'm actually listening to the audiobook as I read so that I can um, just make some new annotations and stuff. So this was, it's my baby. It This, this is Bay. Okay, this this book is Bay. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Bay. Okay, so moving on to all the review books that I have. The first one is actually a contemporary romance, and it is You Belong With Me by Tari Ferris. It's the first book in the Restoring Heritage. I enjoyed this book. I didn't tab it up a lot, um, but I loved it. I gave it five stars. This is contemporary romance. It follows Luke and, oh my god, what is her name? Hannah. So Hannah is a realtor, and Luke is an orphan that lives in the town of which town? Heritage, Michigan. Duh. Um, and there's just a lot of drama, but I think what I loved about this the most is that even though the story centered around Hannah and Luke, they were best friends growing up and they had a slight romance in high school where they kissed each other. They like each other, but things just didn't work out because Luke felt like he wasn't worthy of her and then Hannah just felt like he wasn't interested. They just had such a complex relationship. And then there was another couple who was Hannah's brother. Oh my God, Janie. Um, Janie is her brother's ex-girlfriend, girlfriend, and her brother... Trying to remember his name, but I cannot remember his name. Oh my god, what is her brother's name? <sighs> Thomas, okay. So yeah, you have Thomas, which is Hannah's brother, and his relationship with Janie, which was his ex, which then becomes his girlfriend again. Like, it was a lot, a lot of like, it was a lot of characters. I will say there was a lot of characters, but I liked that it switched back and forth between the perspective of each character. Again, the main characters are Hannah and Luke in this book, but you do get to see some of Thomas. You get to see some of Janie, some of Madison. Um, I can't remember this guy's name for the life of me, but um, I'm uh, Nate. Was it Nate? I think it was Nate. Nate is such an amazing guy. He was kind of like the one to spark everyone into growing their faith. I love the church aspect. I love the faith aspect. It's just so good. You guys can see the green tabs. I had to tap those up because it was really, really good. I recommend it if you're looking for a really nice, wholesome, contemporary romance um, that's clean. Because it is definitely a clean romance. Um, and it's just, it pulled in my heartstrings a lot. I love the stuff that he was, like, Nate was sharing with people and trying to get them involved in the church. Um, so, yeah, this this was really, 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 really good. And I cannot wait for the second book to come out because um, the first book was amazing to me. So, moving on. Okay, so this next book, I have a reading blog for. If you haven't seen it, click that on the screen. But that is going to be In the Shadow of the King by Melissa Rosenberger. Um, Rosenberger? or Ro Yeah, Rosenberger. <laughs> and um, this is a biblical fiction. And, oh my god... 
the best way that I can say this is we understand that Jesus has sisters. Basically, Melissa takes um, the concept of him having sisters and giving them a real being. Um, so it just... The sister's name is Hannah, and there's another sister named Salome, 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 I don't know. So I'm gonna say Salome. Um, but it follows Hannah and her relationship with Yeshua and her coming to faith, even though her brother is Yeshua. And I just, I loved it so much. You have to watch my reading blog. I gave this five stars. This is definitely up there for me with like Tessa Afshar books because her writing literally is a combination of Tessa Afshar and Connie Linkoset for me. Like the two of them mesh together. This, this, this would be the baby right here. Um, I love this book. Totally recommend it. And, um, if you want to hear any more about it, just click the eye on the screen and watch my reading blog. The next book I read was a buddy read with my sis Steph. And I have a reading blog coming for this as well. Or it should be posted, actually. You can, you can click the eye on the screen to watch it because it should be posted. Um, but it's A Royal Zant by Linda Ferguson. And oh my god, this is so good. I gave it five stars, of course. And um, this does deal with rape. It does deal with um, adultery there is killing obviously because they're stoning people and um crucifixion and stuff like that again this follows the life of yeshua but it's told in a very very different perspective and this book you get to see him a lot more interactive with children um the main character's name is jerusha in this book and it's just, just her coming to faith learning to love herself learning to allow others to love her and um seeing the good despite the negative that goes on and it's so crazy watch watch my reading blog because i have so many feels about this book i love jerusha i can't stand abigail which is her mother i love me some jacob i love yogli and yogli for some reason when i think of his name i think of mowgli from jungle book and yogi the bear don't know why um as far as two other characters in this book that i feel like Caiaphas and Ifa, Ifa, whatever his name is, you can throw him in the garbage can and throw the garbage can inside of a erupting volcano. That's how I feel, okay? Five stars. And I really loved it because um, not only did it deal with rape, but it also deals with um, dance. And those two are like, you know, close to my heart. I'm a dancer. I've been dancing all my life. And, um, you know, I've had my experiences. So this was so, so, so good. So good. So good. And it really focuses on forgiving people as well. So. I love this in the concept of the chrysalis and the butterfly, which I can't talk about, but um, the series is called The Lion and the Butterfly, and if you read the first book, you'll understand what it means, okay? Just read it, read it, read it, read, read the book, it's so good, it's so good. Moving on. Okay, the next book I read was The Words Between Us by Aaron Bertels. I was sent this book from Rebel, yes, Rebel for a Block Tour, and um, this was a book I gave three stars to. I, I don't know. This book follows Robin Winsdor, and um, her father is on trial right now. Her father worked for the government. I forgot what he did. I think he was a senator or something like that. But he was, like, selling weapons to um, foreign countries and stuff like that. And then this takes place after 9-11. And then there's a guy named Peter Flint that she grew up with, and I guess she liked him. I don't know. This was just too depressing for me. It was a lot of death talking, a lot of her wanting her father dead, and um, it just, I didn't get a lot of the faith aspects out of this, like, at all. So, yeah, three stars. Um, I did, however, I did love, and I think this is the only reason why I gave it three stars, is because the way she communicates with Peter Flint is through books so like he would send her books and underline certain parts of the books and it would create like a poem so she would have like several different books some classical some contemporaries and um they would create a poem and it's their romance i guess of getting to uh, i don't know when i say i don't know i don't know um i gave it three stars it was not it did not keep my attention so yeah Okay, moving on. This book, oh my god, I loved it so much, and I don't know what has taken me forever to get into this author, Ted Decker, but he has phew, my life. Anyways, so I read The Girl Behind the Red Rope by Ted Decker and Rochelle Decker. It is a father-daughter duo, and oh my god. <laughs> this was so good. This is sci-fi fantasy. I think it's, I'm gonna say sci-fi fantasy. Um, This was so so good a lot better than i thought it was gonna be um i did not go into this with a lot of strong um feelings thoughts i know that my sister steph had it in her anticipated reads video but 
you guys when I read this book I was blown away like blown blown away I did not tab it as much as I wanted to because I had to really quickly read it for the blog tour I only had like a couple days to have it up before it was due so I did mark up in this book though let me go to the back like I was marking in the book but I didn't get a full chance to um enjoy the reading experience because I had to read it so quickly but oh my god I loved it so much it follows oh my god Grace and her brother um who is what is her brother brother's name i can't remember jamie duh jamie <laughs> um so it follows grace she basically lives in this kind of religious community in the woods and um prior to that there's like this whole kind of the world is gonna end apocalypse type of thing from this being in white um literally white suit decked out in white all that um his name was silas and uh basically everybody you know goes into the woods they live behind this red rope in the forest and um there are these things called oh my god why can't i remember what they are called furies <laughs> there are these things called furies that um are out there in the world they're these dark beings and they attack humans so basically they have to live behind this but jamie is very bold he's like i don't believe in this i want to get out of this i don't feel like what they're telling us is the truth so he always goes out further and further past the red rope um just to see the world now the world is i guess it did and there was an apocalypse or something like that but um there are no other humans that they can find so um we have silas which i hate him i i can't stand silas silas is the epitome of what the devil looks like <laughs> um we're gonna leave it at that you have rose who is kind of like the leader of the group and she is just such a twisted woman. I feel bad for her though. Oh, her story was so sad. Um, then like I said, Grace. Grace is such an amazing, she's an interesting character. At first, I liked her brother over her, but as the story progressed, it seemed to be like her brother and her switched places where she started to realize that the community that they lived in was kind of um, a lie and her brother began to believe in it. Um, then there's this character named Eli, which, oh my god, he is such a cute little boy, but, um, Eli for me symbolized Jesus and all that he was, oh, it was so good. I, I don't even know, I have to do a review on this video, a review on this book, <laughs> because there's so much to this book, and it just was, like, amazing. I definitely recommend it, um, The Girl Behind the Red Rope, so good, so good, so empowering, and, um, I really, really, truly enjoyed it, and all that it teaches about fear, and um god's love and how we can tend to be in this world and um hinder our own selves by allowing fear to keep us so i so good five star five star and i'm definitely gonna be reading more of his books so last book i read in september was the griffin heist by james r hannibal this is a what is it? A suspense. Um, CIA type of stuff. Takes place in Moscow. And I gave it four stars. Or was it three and a half? It was three and a half or four stars. I can't remember. But um, if I was Talia Inger, and it starts off with her trying to graduate from the school. I don't even know what they call it. I'm trying to remember. It's a school. She's, she's, grad she's trying to graduate from... Um, the CIA training grounds, that's what it is. Um, she graduates, then she gets placed in Moscow, Moscow, and um, some things go down. It was pretty good. I enjoyed Talia. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to, again, have to reread this book because, again, the same thing as The Girl Behind the Red Rope. I couldn't fully enjoy the reading experience just because I had to read it so quickly for the um, blog tour. So I am going to give this another go. Um, maybe sometime next year i'll read this um right around the time the sequel comes out just because i know i enjoy talia but i just i honestly can't remember anything about it because i had to read it so quickly um so yeah okay so moving on to my october reads um and studies so i'm still going to be studying unexplainable jesus with erica wiggenhorn on facebook because she's doing the online bible study um i just i need to catch up like asap just ASAP needs to catch up. Um, I'm also going to be doing BSF um, and my church Bible study. So basically for both of those, I'll be studying the book of Acts. Today, I'll be diving into Acts chapter 2. Um, we did Acts chapter 1 for the last two weeks, which was great. So awesome. Um, moving on to books that I'm going to read. First one is Light on the Hill by Connie Lincoln said It's the first book in the cities of refuge. I'm, my goal for this is to get through chapters 6 to 15. Um, 15 chapters, maybe 20 or probably completed. I am listening to the audiobook of this, like I said. So, um, yeah, this is a reread for me. This is not something new. We have this. I love it. 
moving on. The book club pick for Daughter of Increase for this month is going to be Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. We start this on October 6th. So by the time you see this video, it'll probably be started. I'm not sure when this video is going up. But, <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to be doing three chapters a week. So this book is actually going to run us three months from October to December, which I think is great. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be diving into this. This is a reread for me. I did not own a physical copy the first time I read it. I read the ebook, So I'm excited to have a physical copy to reread. I just, I love Angel and I love Michael Hosea and I love everything about this book and the Western feel. It is a historical fiction retelling of the story of the prophet Hosea and Gomer. Um, but in this case, the main characters are Michael Hosea as well as Andrew, a.k.a. Sarah. Um, so, yes, this is really, really great. It takes place in 1850. Yeah, 1850? Yes. 1815 California Gold Country, and um, it definitely has that Western kind of vibe, and I think it's amazing. Michael Hosea is everything and more. Everything and more. I love his relationship with God, and um, as I read this, I will be reading through um, the book of Hosea as well. Next book is going to be th this one again, Hooper's Evangelist and Minister's Handbook by Deborah C. Hooper. Um, yeah, I'm still on chapter two. Um, just because you guys know I had like a, such a crazy crazy reading list for last month um so my goal is to at least get halfway through this um i was just going to skip around from chapter to chapter page to page but i'm just going to read the book completely through um so yeah we have this next i have a sequel to the first book that i read last month with my sister steph and oh i can't wait um so the book is going to be a royal family by linda ferguson this is book two in the lion and the butterfly and um september i read the a royal dance yeah a royal dance and um five stars so i'm excited to dive into this and see what happens next for jerusha and her family especially with her husband simone and things with her father and uh just life so yeah next we have sojourner by jonalyn boygett this is book three in the tales of fay raven and um okay so you guys know in august i read um the first two books right yeah i read the first two books which were Wayfarer. No, I'm lying, not Wayfarer. Dawn Singer was the first book, and the second book was Wayfarer. Um, I still need to reread Wayfarer just because the ebook that they sent me was a little messed up. So I'm probably going to order um, a copy myself from Amazon, physical to read, and then dive into this. But I'm excited to just see what happens next. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to read the back of it because I, I didn't fully get through the sequel. So this is the third book and I'm excited. This is a Christian fantasy. And um, if you guys saw my last video with my September reads and studies, you guys know I truly enjoyed the first book and the second book. So excited for this. And I love the covers. They're really, really nice. So we have that. Next, I have Unbraided by Carla Monterosa. It's Transform Your Pain to Power and Purpose. This is a Christian nonfiction, and um, it deals with uh, sexual abuse. That's all I know. And um, this is almost like journaling style, just because there are some things that like she'll have you answer towards the back and do. It's really, really good. Lots of prayers, lots of scriptures, and I just want to see if I can gain anything from it for myself. So we have this. Last book I have for you guys is another biblical fiction, and this is also for a block tour. Yes, I know, lots of books for block tours. <laughs> um, but this is The Last Man at the End by R. William Bennett, and it's a one it's one man's quest to believe. And um, this takes place around the time of Yeshua's birth. Um, it follows Simon. Um, I'm just going to read the quick snippets on the back um so it says simon visits many of the cities where jesus ministered he witnesses the sermon on the mount he hears the parables and testimonies he observes some of the miracles all from a distance his journey takes him through intellectual curiosity disbelief humility sincere investigation moments of inspiration with the typical setbacks and victories of that process until he finally turns himself completely over to christianity so basically this is a fictional account of simon um, who is a contemporary of Jesus. Um, he was basically the last man to get a room at the inn in Bethlehem with when um, Joseph and Mary had came during the time of her getting ready to give birth to Christ. So, yeah, I'm interested to read this. It's not that long, honestly. It's about 180-something pages, 75 chapters. No, I'm lying, 36 chapters. <laughs> I don't know why I said 75, but 36 chapters. And um, this book comes out October 2019. I'm not sure the date, so the date will be on the screen. But it's Christian historical fiction. I'm saying biblical fiction. Um, it, to me, is biblical fiction. So, 
yeah um that's about it and yeah so those are all of the books that i'll be reading and studying for the month of october i'm hoping to get through that oh i also will be studying the um sips sips mean sisters and pearls if you guys didn't know um transform through god's word the group was changed to sips sisters and pearls so they have restarted up the chronological bible study so i'm gonna be doing that and uh yeah so i'm doing that as well so i have a lot of stuff to get through i also need to prep for my um sermons because i have to prepare for another sermon <laughs> yeah so um that's pretty much it for this video if you are not subscribed subscribe if you are subscribed click the little bell to say notify thumbs up this video leave your comments and questions down below and i will get to those and um, i'll see you guys in the next video bye